I think is going to be a hit. It's going to be short, but I think it will be popular. It's going to have a happy ending. And uh, I'm sure of it, and I'm really excited. It should be a good thing, and today we're just talking horror movies, no big deal. I'm not, like, surfing the internet or anything today. When do you remember first getting into horror films? And uh, Ozzy says, hello, how are you doing, buddy? Hi, Ozzy, I'm doing good. Uh, just asking questions tonight, and then I'm going to go over some stuff at the end of the broadcast. But Ozzy, when do you remember first getting into horror films? Like, what was the first horror film you watch? Oh, and Ozzy just smashed the like button. Everybody smashed the like button. Thanks so much. When do you remember first getting into horror films? Oh, cool. Carlos Bor Borloff says 1969. That's awesome, dude. They had some good horror movies back then. I was five. Awesome, man. Yeah, I'm trying to... I'm not sure what age I got into horror movies. I know I watched them with my grandpa on TV first. And then eventually when I was um, a little older, like eight or ten, I used to visit my dad. And then I'd watch them on um, VHS. Watching Sir Gasly, Sir Graves Gasly on TV and DC. Right on. And when I was a kid, there was no horror host. Our, my TV network just showed like this animated um, little clip of a haunted house. And that's all they did. They didn't hire a horror host or anything they just had this dumb animated horror house haunted house type of a thing that played in between the movies but i remember watching squirm on tv with that format tv is where everything is seen it's where everything ends up yeah i'm trying to get on tv right now my plan I'm making this new movie. I don't I don't know if I want to make a movie or a show, but I think I'm gonna, I'm definitely wanting to get on TV and I'm going to strive for that as far as like getting on DVD or Blu-ray or streaming channels or network TV, but I want to license my content for TV. That's my long-term goal right now. Yep, that counts, LOL. I was about five or six when Jaws came out. That started my love of horror movies. Awesome, Jaws is a great movie. That's, that's rad, and definitely I can see how that would cause you to love horror movies. I remember the Jaws ride at Universal Studios. That was a lot of fun, too. That's why I keep going with the Monster Madhouse TV show, 16 years. That's awesome, man. Let's talk, man. I'll do anything to help you do it. Thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Actually, if you could, at your next taping or something, do a little promo video for me to throw in to my footage, that would be rad. And you can plug your show and everything. But I'm always looking for people to submit video. And actually, you're helping right now because you're on my show. Eventually, this footage will be edited and then turned into a show. So you're actually already helping me out a lot. And I really appreciate that, man. Thanks so much. Jaws is terrifying. Yeah, it is definitely a very scary movie. Monster Madhouse rules. Yeah, it does. I got the Roku channel and I've seen all kinds of footage. I, I heart everything he puts out, probably make him feel uncomfortable and stuff. But I love hearting on Facebook. That's one of my favorite things to do is the heart emoji. Let's do that. You got the look for sure. Oh, thanks, man. 
I dig the crown, brother. Thank you. I've been doing this character for probably over 15 years. And uh, I think my first YouTube video was in 2006. So, but I've been doing this character for a long time. I like to watch Halloween and Friday the 13th. Those are both great franchises, man. Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, for sure. Those are rad movies. Where do you watch them at? Do you watch them on um, cable or something? You guys are the beast. I mean the best. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Thanks so much. I'm so stoked with this new format because I'm streaming live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. It's totally worth it. And I'm really, uh, really loving it. And really quick, let me answer another question. What was the scariest scene you ever witnessed in a film? So what was the scariest scene you ever witnessed in a film? And mine is um, Amityville when the dad is looking out the window and then he sees the two lights that are like eyes in the window. That scared me so much when I was a kid and my memories of it, there was like this terror, absolutely terrifying monster in the window. And then I rewatched it as an old man and I noticed that it, all it was was like two little lights. But like, it made such an impression on me when I was a kid, like totally terrified me. It is still scary AF, I bet. Yeah, it is totally. It's, uh, it's very effective and Something I learned at the carnival is that it doesn't have to, to look perfect to be scary. Sometimes just the very basics and the very grotesque basics can just like be just as scary as like a perfectly built monster or something. It's a lot of times it's, it's your, your imagination will fill in the gaps and make it the most scariest thing ever, I think. Which it movie you like, the new one or the old one? I prefer the old one, of course. You know, I saw the old one when I was a kid and really loved it. It's funny because the kids in the new one are the same age that I was, like, in the 80s or... I think it's the 80s or the early 90s or something. But the kids in the new one are the same age that I was during that era, if that makes sense. I still cannot watch The Exorcist or Beyond the Door. Hell yeah, practical effects and what you don't see is the scariest. Yeah, definitely. And Exorcist is definitely a frightening movie. I saw it on the big screen when they re-released it. That was the last time I watched it. And Beyond the Door, I know I've seen, but I don't remember real well. But, uh, yeah, those movies are scary. And practical effects and what you don't see is the scariest. I totally agree. I like the old one. Good, man, that's good. I like the old one better, too. Did you ever watch Killjoy the Clown? Yeah, as far as I know, I've seen all of the Killjoy movies. And I know the first one is like a black exploitation movie and it's really good. But then Trent Haga takes over as Killjoy and like really breathes a lot of life into that character. And the special effects and everything got a little better as the series went on. I like the later ones better than the earlier ones. The last couple ones were really good of Killjoy. I like the funny, scary movies. Yeah, me too. Have you seen Monster Squad? You should check out Monster Squad. That's a good one. Ozzy says, I like Scream. And I remember when I was in high school, uh, my good friend had a uh, unrated co copy of Scream and it's got like 
Drew Barrymore's guts falling out and stuff. That's definitely a real intense scene. I'm going to say, to benchmark or compare your horror product to the standards of others is a wonderful way to determine if your horror product meets consumer needs. And I need to do that. And that's kind of a problem with my business because I'm doing something fairly unique. There's a, obviously there's other horror hosts, but I'm doing like different kind of material and stuff. And I kind of feel like I'm doing some original type material. So it's hard to, there's nothing really to like compare to. I can, I can compare to other horror hosts, but nobody's doing like exactly what I'm doing. So it's a little different. And Ozzy says, Leatherface scared me. Yeah, Leatherface is really scary. I like part one, part two. I actually like all of them. They're, they're all real good. The newest one wasn't that great, but it was okay. It was a decent movie. Leatherface is crazy. Yeah, he is. Leatherface was a true story. Yeah, I think it's based off of Ed Gein. That's cool that you can appreciate the classics and stuff. But again, like I was saying, um, my product, nobody else is doing exactly what I'm doing. So it's kind of hard to compare. It's something original. And I think that makes it hard to present to people like reviewers. They watch it. It's like nothing they have seen before. So they don't know what to say in their review and it's confusing to them because it is kind of disingenuous for me to call my movies movies. And I've been told I should call them training instead. But like, as he says, was Halloween a true story? I don't think it was. I kind of don't think it was. Make sure you test your horror products before launching a campaign. And uh, testing is hard, like I say. I'm always trying to get reviews for my new projects. and I get like a lot of three word reviews or like one sentence reviews, but I wish I could get like some real critical feedback on some of my projects. Last night, I actually watched Horror Helper 2 on my TV. And I, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's not the best movie ever, but I think it's worth watching and decent. It kind of moves along in a way. <sighs> Did you ever watch B Bunny Man is a scary movie? No, I haven't seen that one. I'll have to check that out. I'll have to see if it's on Tubi. Seems like these days everything's on Tubi. Oh, cool. Ming's here. Hi, Shane. Hi, Ming. How are you doing? I'm just working on either my movie or my show. I don't know whether to call it a movie or a show yet. And uh, so... But thanks for watching. Really appreciate you. Thanks for commenting. I can't wait to see your new movie. Really excited about that. I live about five miles from the Bunny Man Bridge. Oh, wow. That's awesome. It's your program. Yeah, that's the my program. That's a good term for it. Because I'm thinking shorter might be better if I could make like an hour long instead of 90 minutes long. But I like that, the Mormo program. It's so dumb, my newest movie, the name keeps changing. So throughout the movie, I call it different things. I was calling it Horror Helper 3, Sharing is Scaring. Then I started calling it Horror Helper 3, Sharing is Scary. And now I'm thinking about calling it Horror Cash 2 and just leave it at that. 
because horror cash is the one thing i'm an original at like i'm the first one to call myself horror cash and that's why i'm thinking that might be a good name for my title i like kane movie see no evil yeah that's really good i still need to watch part two the soska sisters directed part two and i still haven't seen it make sure you test your horror products before launching a campaign so that means i should like have some people look at them and get some honest feedback before I start trying to sell them to a distributor or pass the rights to some media company. Cause I just want to get on TV, you know? Test audience. Yeah, exactly. I need to test audience. And that shouldn't be too hard to find. I can like set something up where they watch and then they take a survey. That should be pretty easy to set up. Evan W says, you're the man, Mormo. Thanks so much, Evan. Really appreciate you. Thanks for being a star on my program. Did you watch the gingerbread man? Is a gingerbread guy killing people? Yeah, I've seen a bunch of those movies. I'm a big fan of Full Moon. They have the new Oopsie Baby movie out, and I really want to see that. The best way to get onto TV is to just toss it out there. We'll talk soon and we'll create a segment for you. Awesome, dude. Thanks so much. That would be great. Yeah, I'm definitely looking for any kind of help. And it's not like I've never been on TV. I've had a public access channel before. And I have my own Roku channel that I'm on that gets like thousands of views every month. So, I mean, I've been on TV. I just want to keep being on TV and be on TV more. I feel like my content has more impact than when, it, when it's viewed on TV rather than a phone or a tablet or a laptop or anything. That um, there's just so much more impact when people watch you on a TV. It's a big difference as far as like the relationship with the viewer. When you're on TV, you're more of a star, like whether you're on a DVD. And I've also burned my own DVDs, but I've never had a real distributor of DVDs. But I feel like with Horror Helper 3 or Horror Cash 2 or whatever, with my new movie coming out, I'll have like many movies I can offer so I could be on multi-packs and stuff and have like a multi-pack DVD or Blu-ray or something. <laughs> what was the best horror movie you watch and what is the worst horror movie you ever watch? Um, probably the best horror movie would be Dawn of the Dead 78. The original um, Dawn of the Dead I just really love that movie and uh, the worst horror movie you ever watched would probably be one called The Jar I watched in high school and uh, that movie was awful. It was really bad. Push your online Roku follower base when you pitch to networks. That's a good point. I need to bring that up that I already have a big following and everything. Gotta sell stuff to make money. The problem, the problem is everyone's making stuff out there. Tons of material. Yeah, I, I make money on special TV and I make money on Gumroad and I make money on YouTube and I make mo I've made money on Amazon royalties. And I make money with um, so many hits occasionally, but uh, I, I do have like premium content I can sell. And those are the ways that I make money so far. Dawn of the Dead 78 in 2004 was awesome. Yeah, I love the original, wasn't a fan of the remake, but... 
I had a, I had like a little nervous breakdown my my twenty year old self when, um, Dawn of the Dead remake came out and just I was. I, I was re emotional about other stuff and that movie just really was like the straw that broke the camel's back and I was mad because I knew that George Romero had been shopping Land of the Dead for years and nobody would fund Land of the Dead. But in a way, the Dawn of the Dead remake um, turned into George Romero finding funding for Land of the Dead because the remake was such a success, so people were more willing to invest in Romero's movie, Land of the Dead. And I love Land of the Dead. I consider it absolutely brilliant. I thought it was a great movie. I re remodel houses to make money as far as content goes. I've produced over 12,000 TV shows, get a lot of airplay, but very, very difficult because of the web to make money of just material. Gotta tie in with some products or sales to cash in foldable money. Yeah, I was um, I was really like hot about making t-shirts for a while. And then um, I kind of lost steam on that. The t-shirts weren't coming out right and I couldn't figure out how to do it right. But I like selling t-shirts for sure. And I made a t-shirt for Ozzy, but it was such a piece of junk. It got wore out in like one week or something or a couple months. Land of the Dead was awesome. Yeah, I saw it twice on the big screen. Absolutely loved it. It's just so smart, it's such a smart movie. It's all about having a cool gimmick. Yeah, and I think this, this um, live chat thing is a good gimmick. Like nobody, like there's people doing it, but like editing a live chat, I think it's a really good idea. Easier to sell stuff at live events, online is tough. There's so much competition. Yeah, definitely. That's another long-term goal for me is to eventually be able to do conventions. Oh, John Migley's here. I have a Mormo sign card. It's in my collection. I have a bit more work to do, but we'll be done in about 30 minutes. If you're still live, I'll come by again. Cool. Thanks, John Migley. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you. And you're part of the show now. I'm so stoked I signed a card for you. That's awesome. Something happened to the t-shirt. Yeah. It just got all faded in the wash. I remember you sent me a picture. So I don't want to charge people like 23 bucks to get a shirt that only lasts a couple months. You know, that's not cool at all to me. So I was trying to make shirts and then I just got lazy and frustrated. Not being smart at all and just stopped doing the shirts thing. But I got to get back on that. And like, I barely leave the house anymore. So it's hard to get to the post office and stuff. That would be cool. You send me a picture and you and autograph it. Yeah, I need to do that. I need to have some pictures printed up. I've been meaning to do that. Like print a picture of you and autograph it. Yeah, I need to do that. I, that's something I definitely plan on doing. All right, we'll go to the last statement here. When setting out to find a company for horror marketing, pick one that sells products you are interested in. And that's great advice. And there's like the other night I was thinking about Makeflix, JR Bookwalters DVD company. And I was thinking maybe they would be cool to go through. And I don't know if their movies end up in stores or something, but obviously I'd love to be on a DVD that ends up in Walmart or Target or even Big Lots or Dollar Tree. I'd love to get in a company that was big enough 
that they could get me in a lot of retail stores, you know? Where are you based at, man? And I'm based in the entertainment capital of the Midwest, Branson, Missouri. That's my my hometown where I'm living now. I'm from San Diego originally, but I live in Branson, Missouri now, and I love it. It's beautiful here, and uh, it's got all the comforts, all the all the comforts of the big city with the small town vibe. It's basically a very small town that millions of people visit every year. And so it's got everything a big city got, but it's still like living in a small town and it's uh, real nice. I watched an old video of you with the Mormozine doll. Yeah, I need to bring the Mormozine doll back. People love that doll and uh, it's such, it's like a great work of art. I need to bring that back for sure. Dude, you are in the timeshare capital. Yeah, there's a lot of timeshare in um, Branson. There's also a lot of like timeshare um, selling or like getting like places that'll help you get rid of your timeshare and help you get out of all those contracts and stuff i've tried working for timeshare because there's good money in it but nobody wants me i'm too slow for timeshare too slow and too much of a slob to sell timeshare when setting out to find a company for horror marketing pick one that sells products you are interested in and there's so many there's so many good companies I got horror marketing ads hanging on the wall behind me. And there's so many good companies I could go with. I was actually getting ads today for this um, training course on how to get leads on LinkedIn. And I was thinking I might make a movie about me um, smashing leads on LinkedIn and trying to sell my movies and stuff. I didn't really care about the 2017 Leatherface. Yeah, that one was not great. Um, it had some good scenes, but it really confused me. Like the whole time I thought the big fat mongoloid was like, that's who Leatherface was. And then it turned out it wasn't and that guy got killed and it really like confused and up and upset me because the whole time I thought he was Leatherface. So that kind of upset me. I thought it was a decent movie, but it's definitely my least favorite of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Me too, I thought the big guy was Leatherface too. Yeah, definitely. It was very confusing. Talking about movies, what's your take on Rob Zombie doing a Monsters remake? I'm really excited for it. I'm like very sad that Sid Haig can't play Grandpa Munster. I think he would have been brilliant in that role. So like I was just saying, I was just telling a friend this tonight um, that it's just so sad that Sid Haig couldn't play Grandpa Munster. But I think it's gonna be a great movie. I'm a big fan of Rob Zombie. I've liked everything he's done. Um, I'm more, I'm definitely more of a fan of his movies than his music. I do love his music, but I don't follow it as religiously as I do the movies. I like the Rob Zombie Halloween movie, Michael Myers. Yeah, definitely, me too. I liked parts one and two, and so many people hate the, hate on those movies. But I, I think Rob Zombie's a great filmmaker. I'm a big fan. I'm also a big fan of Glenn Danzig as a mo movie maker. And I can't wait to see his, um, to see his uh, vampire Western. I can't remember the title, but I'm really looking forward to it. Who's better, Rob Zombie or Marilyn Manson? I have to say for music, I'm a bigger fan of Marilyn Manson and I'm not crazy about his new stuff, the new stuff that came out. 
but he's got a lot of solid albums and I saw him perform in the 90s and uh, I think overall he's had a better career as a musician but um, definitely big fan of Rob Zombie as a filmmaker and a musician I just like Marilyn Manson a little better.